I'm trying to talk about the optimal control problem. That uh, since it is closely related to inverse problem. So the first thing is a very uh, preliminary introduction, and then I will give some description of our numeric measure. Yeah, so just uh, please forgive me. It is so old for me. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I cannot give you your every details. And the last thing. Is the code and the examples. I can still run it for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so the first part is the, uh, uh, the introduction. And the optimal control problem is actually looking like this. There is an object function here. And uh, this y is called state variable. And uh, this u is the uh, control variable. And uh, this u is uh, Limited in an admissible set U. Yeah, so th this set is often given by uh, inequality constraints. Yeah, since if it is a, a if this uh, is an equality constraint, we will try to collect it in here. Yeah, for the for the constraint equation. Yeah, since I separated this y from u, actually we can combine these two things together to be one variable. Yeah, since uh, in this equation, in this uh, uh, constraint equation, and uh, yeah, we, we want to show what we want to say is that uh, if we give a u here, and then by this equation we can solve this y u. Yeah, so that's why we write it into an y and a u here. And sometimes we will call this constraint equation to be the state equation, since it's an equation for the state. And uh, yeah, for this uh, uh, optimal control problem, yeah, actually is related to the inverse problem. Yeah, so this is only the relation from the talk to this workshop. Yeah, such as for the yeah a very extensive inverse problem is the so-called inverse scattering problem. It is looking like this. There is a, a scatter here, and the the coefficients of this media we are we developed it to be this stigma, and then we will try to give give an incident waves sometimes a lot of incident waves with different frequency. A, a different uh, incident uh, angle, and then we try to measure the reflective wave, and then we are yeah we will have this observation of the reflective wave, and uh, this U R is obtained by solving the such as an Helmholtz equation. Yeah, it can be some different kind of equations. Such as the the, the the EIT problem given in, in the uh, uh, lectures here, and the, the equations can be a little different. And uh, then this U R is given by the of, uh, by this U on the observing boundary. Yeah, so basically this formation looks like an optimal control problem. And definitely, we will always have this regularization term. Yeah, otherwise, uh, this problem will be case really very terrible due to its uh, near post rates. Yeah. Oh, let's <coughs> here the constraint equation is actually a linear equation, but since the the uh, the variable to be uh, to be uh, to be uh, yeah the, this sigma is unknown yeah so this uh, sigma is times to so this great u so often the inverse problem is longer yeah but I would not like to go to such difficult problem so we are trying to give to study a very easy optimal control problem yeah yeah I will risk Treat myself basically on this very simple model problem to show our numeric method. 
Yeah, so here the object function yeah, is very simple and the gear and the, this y0 you can uh, take, take it as the observe the quantities and this y is state, state variable I assume that this y is the, the solution of a Poisson equation here and the control variable u here is where there is a linear operator on u and uh, yeah, currently I assume that u is defined on the same domain as y yes, it can be different and uh, sometimes this u can appear in the, this constraint equation on the boundary or only, uh, only on part of the boundary but yeah, it can be in different uh, formations but I will restrict myself on this very uh, simple case here and the regularization term here is the very standard closed type of regularization here and this alpha is the parameter and I will not talk about how to choose the parameter too inside yeah our uh, our uh, our we are focused on the on the numeric myself here and the, the admissible set UAB and uh, I only assume that it is the positive function. Yeah, so basically, some other uh, constraint like uh, this UAB can be translated to such a, a formation. Yeah, the, uh, the other things can be transformed. Can be transformed. Yeah, but uh, uh, one thing here I cannot, uh, we cannot do is that uh, here with uh, this constraint, this UAD is a convex set. But sometimes if the UAD it is not a convex set, and then we cannot make some change of variable or some some very uh, simple tactics to make it into such a convex set. Uh, for uh, since for convex uh, admissible uh, set here and uh, for this equation we know that the solution is existed and it is unique but uh, if this this admissible set is, is not convex we cannot have the uniqueness of the solution. Yeah, so basically this is uh, simple and uh, it is linear and the, uh, the <coughs> existence and the uniqueness of the solution has already given uh, more than uh, 40 years ago yeah. Yeah, we can find it in this book by Leos it is the optimal control of system governed by partial differential equation it, it's a book yeah. in this book you can find uh, a lot of different formations like the problems I just showed yeah, yeah for this uh, yeah, since this problem actually it is a, a optimization problem uh, it's only yeah we, we put the uh, PDEs there yeah, so exactly as the optimization problem it has the so called optimality condition yeah here the optimality condition, I mean the first order key condition for optimization problems. Yeah, for for the, the, the uh, for the optimal control problem, just about the the, the optimal condition here is the, the first thing is the, this uh, constraint equation. Yeah, it's for you. In this equation, if we give this u and then we can uh, have this y. And then the other thing is the so-called the, the core state equation. So looking like this. Yeah, here we introduce a new variable. This new variable P is the core state. Yeah, actually it is the Lagrange method. And therefore, for this equation, if we give y, yeah, since y0 is beta, yeah, so if we give y, then we can have this P. And uh, the, uh, the last thing is here, but for this is actually a variation of inequalities. Uh, it, is, it is not an equation, and we have an inequality here. 
and the, the test uh, transition V should be in the admissible set. And we're trying to find the U in this uh, admissible set for each V in the admissible set, we always have this quantity to be positive. Yeah, so this uh, this uh, uh, I will read for the uh, name of the equation, this equation to be the core state equation, and then this one to be the variation in inequalities. And uh, yeah, I write uh, this uh, minus Laplacian star to be the dual operator. Yeah, since uh, the, the, for, for minus Laplacian dual operator is it itself. But uh, sometimes, uh, in some practical case, and we can replace this operator to be this operator. So we can plug this uh, coefficient A here, and A can be uh, long symmetric. And then this start will give us a uh, uh, transpose of A to the core state equation. Yeah, so basically, uh, this uh, thing is a very uh, simple model problem. And uh, we see that uh, except for, uh, yeah, we, we, we can have uh, this relation since we, if we give u and then we will have this yu. And for the given y and then we will we have this py. And uh, so, uh, we collect uh, these two things together, we see that uh, actually we give u and the, the cost state p u will be given. Yeah, so they're uh, dependent on the variables and the negatives. And uh, yeah, yeah, since the other two equations are the, the other two equations are the very standard elliptic equation, yeah, so only, the only thing not uh, very familiar to our students uh, perhaps is the variation in Equality. And the variation in equality is a problem looking like this. And uh, yeah, we search for a u in an admission of set such that this inequality is focused. Yeah, this, here this pi is called a really <coughs> bilinear form, and this l is a linear operator. Yeah, a very uh, starting. A um, more um, problem for variational equality is actually this one. Yeah, this is the first example in our uh, books, uh, Earth, such as uh, functional analysis. And uh, the, yeah, we will have uh, such a uh, thing. The, the, the admissible set to be the uh, 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 column in such as the H01. Uh, and then we have. Uh, this bilinear form pi here, and the right hand side is uh, this f times v minus q, and this v is in this admissible set. <laughs> yeah, so for, for, for this variation in equality, and uh, the, the physical background is actually looks like, uh, yeah, since it is closely related to the Poisson equation. For the Poisson equation, its a physical background is that if there is an elastic uh, <coughs> membrane, and we uh, exert the force of the membrane, and then the, there will be a displacement <coughs> of, the, of, of the membrane to its equilibrium location, and then uh, we will have a minus Laplacian u equal to f, and this f is the force, and the u is the displacement. And uh, then just think that if I have a membrane here, and then I have a force, so with the exponent of the force, the membrane is uh, moving down, but uh, if some part of the membrane touch the uh, table, yeah, so there is an obstacle. Yeah, so this problem is actually there is another problem in the obstacle problem. Yeah, so then some part of the membrane touch the table, and then we know 
there will be a free boundary on the memory, and the, only some part of the memory will uh, satisfy the Poisson equation. And uh, so here is the here is the uh, the figure of this thing. And uh, yeah, I, I I I can only give a uh, one dimensional is and uh, so this is the obstacle and uh, yeah, this v should be greater than minus one. Yeah, so we have an, an f and uh, so there is a free boundary and uh, in this part it is the, the so-called action set and uh, so this f this f uh, this f have Actually, it does not uh, working here, but uh, F working on uh, this part. Yeah, so these two points, okay, only one dimension here, so these two points are the free boundary. And uh, at the free boundary here, and uh, we will have a singularity. And the singularity here means uh, the jump ingredient. And it, uh, Weak singularities. Yeah. So, if we, so we, if we have uh, such an variation in inequality in the whole system, whatever if the data is smooth, we will always have singularity. And particularly for our optimal control problem, yeah. Since the the variation in inequality, yeah, there are no there are low gradient on the left hand side uh, uh, bilinear form. You will see that actually it's an L2 variation in equality. For the L2 variation in equality, and uh, then there will be a so called strong discontinuity, and uh, we will have discontinuity in the value of U. And, uh, and so this is. Uh, the first reason that we want to uh, have some adaptive mesh method for uh, this problem, yeah, since the, 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 the singularity is always there. And then the, another source of the singularity is, is actually coming from uh, this coefficient A, since for a practical problem, there are often there will be discontinuity in this A and so the discontinuity in A will give us uh, H1 singularities in the state and the co-state verbals. Yeah, so then let me go to the numeric method. Yeah, the numeric method and the, and the major uh, ingredient of the uh, numeric method are uh, listed here and the first thing is that we are using an but I don't have approximation, uh, unstructured sim uh, simplex mesh for two dimensional and the three dimensional case, and uh, we use the the yeah, the so called edge adaptive mesh method. That means we will yeah we will have the local mesh refinement and the cosine. And uh, yeah, to do this, to do this kind of mesh adaptation, and we need a Posteriori error estimate. Yeah, it will tell us how to refine and uh, cause the grids. And the code is, uh, uh, is based on an palette N package. is a is an C plus uh, plus code. Uh, yeah, for adaptive palette elements. Yeah, so the first thing is that uh, yeah, we have a domain. Yeah, basically, the domain for y and uh, u can be different, but now we assume that uh, u is defined on omega 2. Yeah, so we uh, denote uh, the, the boundary of uh, uh, omega to be this gamma. The first thing is that we triangulate this domain to have a so-called background mesh. Yeah, for two-dimensional case, we have, yeah, I just, uh, I just give this mesh behind. 
uh, yeah, for two dimensional case, and the, the elements are triangles, and for three dimensional case, we have the, uh, the, uh, the tetrahedron uh, elements. And then on um, this mesh, we have the following approximation space. Yeah, for the control variable, since u is in L2 space, and so we let the, uh, the approximation space for u to be this, uh, catch the u sub h, and it's L2, and then that means we do not need any uh, continuity on the boundary of the elements, and uh, each element in I, it is a polynomial. And for the state and the cost state variables, and we have two uh, space y, h, and p sub h here. For y, h, and the, the yeah, it can have some boundary condition y sub b here, and uh, it is in h1, so it's conforming. And uh, on each element, it can be a polynomial. And uh, for pH, and the boundary condition for P is always zero. Yeah, so it is in this H uh, sub zero one space. Yeah, so uh, the first step is that we assume that the mesh for U, Y, and P are the same. The first, the first step we can do this. And uh, um, to describe create as the uh, optimal control problem, yeah, once the approximation space is given, yeah, one, uh, one method is to direct uh, discrete as uh, original. Uh, minimization problem. Yeah, so we can drag the uh, substitute uh, this y h and u h into this g. Basically, there are no problem. In the in the in the object function, there are only L two integration. And uh, for this constraint equation, and uh, we need this uh, weak form. And so it's a very standard thing. So this is a, this is a, uh, simple, and uh, then for this uh, discretized uh, optimal control problem, and the existence and the uniqueness of its solution is still given by the same theory by uh, uh, the result in Neon's uh, in Neon's book. Yes, yeah, since uh, that uh, theory is actually an abstract theory, and yeah, so we can apply it to both the continuous problem and the uh, 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 discrete problem here. And uh, we see that uh, if even the mesh of uh, control and uh, state are the same, but this, the space, the approximation space can be chosen quite, quite free. Since the uh, the degree of the polynomials for them that can be different. Yeah, for for different uh, yeah, I mean for for different the uh, key and the M here, yeah, we always have the existence and the unique of the solution. Okay. The degree of the polynomial. Yeah, so we can have a very high order uh, degree of polynomial for y, but uh, only piecewise constant constraint uh, control and the the existence and the unique of the solution is still there. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, in this. Uh, 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 in this discretization, we see that the approximation space for caustic P 
key is missing. We do not have that space here. And uh, the, this uh, uh, discretization will directly give us a algebraic optimization problem. And if you want to, to be lazy, and you can directly call an optimization uh, code to solve this problem. And uh, then for this discretized problem, and uh, still we can have its uh, optimality condition. Yeah, for this optimality condition, we can find back the, the core state equation again. But uh, here we see that uh, the test function, yeah, yeah even here the, uh, the operator Laplacian and uh, Laplacian dual are the same as here, write yh to be here and ph to be here, depending on the, the dual uh, position. And then the test function in QH, it should be related. It should be related to the space for y h. Yeah, so all the other things are same. Yeah, so we here we see that we have two sets of the space for cos state to be the dual space of y h here. Yeah, so uh, if we discretize the uh, optimal control problem like that, yeah, we, we, we are always have this thing. But actually we can do something um, different and uh, yeah, we can discretize the, uh, the optimal condition. Yeah, we can do, direct do that. And uh, in this case, yeah, since uh, we can have different space here, for yh and uh, ph, yeah. So the degree of the polynomial can be different for y and p. Yeah, but uh, uh, you see that if we give yh here, yeah, we still can uh, uh here, and we still can have this yh. Yeah, since this equation is well posed. And then we give an yh here, and this ph can be obtained. Yeah, this equation is still well posed. Yeah, but uh, we do not uh, we do not know if the whole system is well posed. Yeah, the the the, uh, the, the well postedness of the whole system can only give it for the uh, problem on the last step on the last step. Yeah, so uh, for this uh, for this uh, new thing, and uh, we do not have the where post this, but I guess we should. But I don't know how to prove. But please notice that uh, yeah, all these things is more than fifteen years ago. Yeah, so perhaps some someone has uh, proved it. I did not uh, check all the references uh, in. Last years, and uh, then we can have some flexibility in choosing the space for for pH, and then it's uh, yeah. So it's it's possible that we can have better efficiency, and uh, in our numeric simulation, and I can always have a, a very good numeric result. Yeah, the the reason here we want to choose. A different uh, space pH is that uh, since uh, this y is in H1, and uh, so if the opposite, opposite verbal y0 is in H12, and uh, that means the, the right hand side, the right hand side of uh, this equation y h and y0 is in L2, and that and then we can have an H2 pH here, and uh, so. H P will have a have an improved improved regularity, and so perhaps we can use much less degree of freedom to have a uh, have a pH with very high quality. Yes, so this is the is the reason we we are in the risk to uh, 
lose the verposities to give a different edge. And yeah, the algebraic solver for the discrete has a problem is that uh, for the for the optimization problem we can direct apply an uh, optimization algorithm, but uh, for this optimality condition, yeah, we can use the so-called precondition, the steep, steepest descent uh, method. Yeah, but basically, it is the uh, uh, steepest descent uh, method. This is the most simple method, but if you can give a certain very high quality preconditional, and then it can be very efficient. Yeah, yeah, please just remember that actually uh, conjugate gradient, it can be uh, collect into this class 2 and we can that actually we use the matrix itself to be the preconditional. And so the, the, the solver is looking like this and we give an initial gas here and then we set a key to be zero and we solve the state equation to this YHK given this UHK and then we solve the core state equation to have this PHK based on this YHK and then we solve the variation inequality to have the UHK plus 1 for the next step and then we check if, the, if we should stop and then we can go back to step two. Yeah, so basically, it, it looks like a uh, t cut iteration. And uh, the for step two and three, this it is uh, yeah, it's a very standard uh, unit equation. So we can use uh, the edge break and match break method solver. And uh, for uh, for step four, yeah, for step four, it's a variation equality. Uh, for yes, if there if it is an H one variation in equality, the solver is quite complex. But for the L two variation in equality, particularly when we are discretize this U H to be piecewisely constant, we do not require any continuity on the boundary of the element. So the variation in, in equality. On each element will be decoupled, and then we can direct the to write the the solution out like this. And for piecewise constant, we have this formation for piecewise linear, and it is it's a little complex, but we can still write it uh, write the energy solution even for three dimensional case. And the for three dimensional case the yeah, the analytical solution, there are a lot of if else, if else, but actually it can be given. And then the preconditional, the, the preconditional in the algebraic solver, yeah, I do not mean the preconditional in solving the elliptic problem. In that part, the algebraic multiple solver is already very efficient. And uh, this preconditional actually means yeah, originally we want to solve this UK plus plus one from this variation inequality, and then we can modify this step to be the following steps here, and then we solve this UH star, and then calculate the gradient here, and then we modify this gradient to be a Precondition matrix and uh, with a relaxation parameter here to update the UHK to be this UK plus one. Yeah, so this is where the preconditioner to be quite. And uh, okay. and then is the um, posteriori error estimate. This is used for mesh adaption. Yeah, and the 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 basic uh, uh, approach 
to uh, give the posterior harassment and looking like this. And uh, yeah, for this y h, and it uh, satisfies this equation, and uh, then we give this y h theta to be the solution of original PDE with the data given as u h. And then we calculate the difference then using the basic, uh, the very standard method, in such as the book given by reference in 1996, and to give the posterior error estimate. But uh, this y u h will appear in the error estimator, and uh, and then. This y depended on the exact u, and this y depend on this u h can be directly given as the difference of the data. Yeah, so this is the first part. Yeah, and for this part we we can still have the same similar thing. Yeah, since it's a, a, a dual problem, and the last thing is the variational inequality. For the variation in inequality, actually, the arrow is dependent on the residual of uh, this part. Yeah, if this part is greater than zero, and we need only to calculate the residual on every element to check if it is, it is zero. And for the, for the case it is equal to zero, and there will be no arrow at all. And uh, the problem is that the location of the free boundary will be uh, there will be an error on the uh, free boundary itself, and so we need to give a very small band along the uh, free boundary given by the numerical result, and uh, try to calculate all the possible error around there. And so this is the method to give the uh, error estimate for the for the variational inequalities. And then we collect all these things together. And I I only write down the leading term in the error estimate. And we will have these three things. And it should plug some other things. And then there will be a loop. And so here we have an H1 arrow here and. The, the last thing is that we have a L2 error here, and then by some inequalities, and then we can close the whole uh, estimate. And then with this error estimate, and we can have we can have uh, this so-called uh, adaptive mesh method. And the first thing is that on the current mesh, we solve U H where H and P H itself is already. It's written procedure. And then we give the estimator based on the formulas in the last slides. And since I write down the leading term there, and I use this term to, uh, to uh, change the mesh, if we are using the same mesh for u, y, and p, and then we can collect all three terms. Yeah, to to choose which element should be refined, and uh, if we use uh, use different mesh for uh, the control problem and uh, state uh, 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 and the, the state equation, and uh, we can use this term to uh, adapt. Uh, Mesh for control and use these two terms to adapt the mesh for state variable. And the, the most uh, uh, radical, radical thing is to use, we can even use different mesh for state and the core state. And then we can use this term to adapt the mesh for state variable and this term to adapt the mesh for. Uh, cost state variable, so it's possible. And uh, then we estimate and uh, then refine the mesh, and uh, yeah, the coarsening of the some mesh is all also included in this step. And then, then there will be a uh, loop.
and uh, yeah, we are implementing it in use. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, I'm the, I'm the author of uh, this package. Yeah, it's an C++ adaptive finite element package, and uh, uh, it supports edge adaptive mesh for two dimensional and three dimensional case for simplex meshes. It can be yeah, we can use uh, POSIX, match thread, or MPI based parallelization uh, with this package. Yeah, it's an open source uh, package, and uh, yeah, yeah. Just as I mentioned, uh, and we we can have different meshes for UH and YH, and the YH and the PH are on the same. YH and the PH are on the same mesh. But in, if we want to do this kind of things, that means yeah, just remember in the in the state equation, yeah, we have this y edge on one mesh, but the right hand side the u edge is on another mesh, and so we need to calculate the that b u edge times a test function in y edge. Okay, so these two functions are on different mesh. Yeah, so yeah, all. Our package can support this kind of operation, but it requires this two mesh to be adaptively generated from the same background mesh. And since for the same background mesh, there are some relations we can we can calculate the direct from the history of the adaptation. Yeah, so we can calculate all these terms. And uh, yeah, just now I, I have mentioned that the YH and the PH can be in the same or different by the animal space. Yeah, we need to calculate this term. And uh, for this thing, yeah, yeah just think that uh, yeah, two uh, mesh generated from the ba same background mesh, it will be looks like this one and this one. And since the background are exactly the same, and we can say that, uh, yeah, if we we want to calculate a numeric integration on this triangle, and we know that actually this uh, very small triangle is in this uh, grid triangle on any other mesh, so all these quantities can be uh, calculated in a very efficient uh, way. And uh, yeah, I, I've already mentioned that, that the most ready for implementation is that uh, we can use different, we can even use different mesh for YH and PH. Yeah, so basically, yeah, in, in such kind of case, this PH is uh, impossible to be in this space anymore. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so impossible to be the KG condition of any optimization problem. Yeah, so the, the discrete has the optimized condition. Yeah, we, we do not have the uh, have the uh, where process and uh, the, the the numeric performance uh, is always uh, very and uh, and we need the proof. But uh, I already give I already give up a lot of this. <laughs> Since I, I I move to some other topic of after. Yes, so the last thing is the code and the examples, and I will try to show you on my computer. <coughs> yeah, you see here and. Uh, yeah, so this is the code. It's, uh, it's not. Uh, it's not actually. It's not very, very, very complex. And uh, yeah, let me. Show. Yeah, I cannot. Yeah, this code should be. Yeah, I should have already give this code back in two thousand and two.
Yeah, this is a two-dimensional, two-dimensional, uh, two-dimensional um, problem. And uh, yeah, let me show some. Uh, yeah, show something that uh, you may you can relate it with the slides I just gave. And uh, you see here, and uh, we have a so-called uh, geometry tree. And uh, so in this tree, actually, we store the information of all the mesh on that tree. This is uh, we will refine and and triangle. A triangle into four small triangles, and then uh, hierarchically it will give us a tree. And on this tree, we can have all different meshes, and then we have different element space, and then we have functions. And these things are the posteriori error estimate. And uh, yeah, in the each adaptive mesh method we call this to be the indicator. Yeah, it is a quantity on every element to indicate which element should be refined. Yeah, so it's it looks like this. You see that. Uh, this is the this is the procedure I just present. Uh, yeah, this is a run, and the, the run is uh, it it's really a procedure, and we solve the uh, optimal control problem and uh, save the data and uh, calculate uh, uh, calculate the error. Yes, this is a numeric example. I will calculate the error yeah, by the given index solution. And uh, in this step, I will calculate the error estimator. And with this error estimator, and then we change the mesh. And so this loop. And uh, yeah, all the other things are yeah, perhaps we can have, we, we can see how we do this. So the optimal control problem. Yeah, so this is the step. Uh, yeah, basically, basically, yeah. If you are not working with C uh, yeah, it's just a kind of rubbish for you. But uh, but you can find some words here, and uh, and uh, we. Give the we give stiff matrix for y, and it's based on the balance element space. And anyway, we can calculate the matrix, and then, then we give an algebraic solver for this matrix, and then, then we we uh, we prepare all this. Uh, all this uh, matrix, and then, then in this loop, yeah, in, 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 yeah, in this do, yeah, where, in, around here, yeah, do where loop, and then, then we solve this optimal control problem. Yeah, so basically, it's looking like this. And so let me show you how the the code is working. You see here, and uh, and uh, at the first we generate the the background mesh, and uh, this is yeah. I think some of you perhaps you can use it. This is just a two dimensional. Uh, 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 triangulation uh, software a very small one. <laughs> yeah, since it's simple, so a lot of people like it. Okay, actually, 
Yeah, just now I already prepared the background mesh. And then, then I compare the code and uh, yeah, it's really amazing for me since only a few days ago I, I tried to prepare for this presentation and I found that I can still compare these things so smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to run it. You see that uh, on the left hand side. Yeah, I, yeah. This this part is the iterative so solver for the optimal control program. And then I'm trying to calculate the error. After calculate the error, and then I will have the I will have uh, change the mesh. After change the mesh, and then we go to another round uh, to solve the problem. On, on the right hand side, and uh, this are detailed log information, you will see that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the information coming from the edge group match server at around here. Yeah, I, yeah, I restrict uh, it, the iterative steps to be 20. Yeah, actually, the, the, the uh, residual open in 20 steps it will be decreased the more than. Uh, more than uh, a million <coughs> times, so it's already enough for for the uh, for the accuracy. <coughs> yeah, you see here, and uh, yeah, just now you see that uh, I generated uh, these files from this one and uh, from these things to this one, and uh, so you see that I'm not cheating. <laughs> and uh, and just now the calculation gives us this data. Yeah, this is the uh, this the numerical result. I will I will show you the numerical result. <coughs> yeah, so this is the this is the virtual uh, virtualization software and uh, yeah the. This thing is you. Yeah, you see that. Yeah, this is the mesh. I just now I directly use the different meshes for all variables, and this is the surface. And then you can see that there is a jump around here. There is a jump. So there is the strong uh, singularity and the, the discontinuity in the discontinuity in value. Of the of the functions, and yeah, let me show you the. Yeah, you see that the mesh around here. All the, I'm much better on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, much better on my screen, but it's a internet. Yeah, I think I, I cannot I cannot read it on here. Yeah. So it's actually. Uh, yeah, quite, quite high quality solutions. Yeah, but just think that uh, I have used uh, this code about 15 years ago. <laughs> so at the last time, uh, yeah, such a such a computation is actually quite challenging for the computer computers around that time. <laughs> uh, ah, computer change. Yeah, uh, and let me show the mesh for for y. Yeah, this is the mesh for y. Uh, the mesh for y. Oh, yeah, I can remember that. In the exact solution, there is around a single point around there. Yeah, so for for y, uh, the mesh uh, is almost uniform. And uh, you see, there is a there is a singularity around the, this corner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I used up my time. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, then just let me show you the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I will. I, I still have the figures here, and uh, yeah, I, I will show you the the. the yeah, this is the. Uh, yeah, for for third dimensional case. So so let me stop. I'm sorry about the high. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you.